Toric ICL is a great option for patients with refractive errors who cannot benefit from LASIK or patients with keratoconus. We start by filling the cartilage with viscoelastics and with a few drops of BSS. Then we take the ICL out of its container with a soft plunger. We put the lens in the open end of the cartilage to make sure that the convexity of the lens is looking forward. Then with a special long forceps, the lens is tucked in the open end of the cartilage. Then the lens is pushed forward inside the cartilage. Make a clear corneal incision of about three millimeter. We fill the anterior chamber with a low viscosity viscoelastic like the microvisc or the provisc. Try to avoid not to overfill and always keep the viscoelastic in front of the iris, not behind the iris. We do a paracentesis opening near the distal end of the ICL. Most people, they usually do two paracentesis at 6 and 12 o'clock, but I don't see the need for that. Only one paracentesis is enough. Then the tip of the cartridge is placed firmly at the incision and the ICL is injected slowly inside the eye we have to observe how the eye scan is unfolding and be gentle of the tip we can perfectly control the unfolding of the lens in a proper position. We don't remove the tip of the cartridge from the incision until the distal haptics are completely unfolded. Then we add few drops of viscoelastics on top of the ICL to push it down. Through the paracentesis, a special spatula. place the distal haptics behind the eyes.
then through the main incision we place the proximal haptics of the ICL behind the eyes. We rotate the lens to align the axis of the toric ICL in the direction and in the axis that we want it to be placed in to correct the astigmatism. Usually, usually the lens is designed with its axis that needs a very small rotation. We inject myopol in the anterior chamber to constrict the pupil and to wash most of the risk elastic out of the eye. Then, with the vitreous cutter, we perform a peripheral iridectomy, which is a very important step in cases of posterior chamber facet lenses to avoid pupillary block. Then we wash the viscoelastic with BSS by injecting BSS inside the anterior chamber and gently pressing at the lip of the wound. Most of the viscoelastic will leave the anterior chamber. Then we hydrate the incision to make sure that the incision is watertight. 